Hi guys, I'm Dr. Chloe Costigan from Mobility Doc. I am going to show you a quick foam rolling routine for your entire body. One of my favorite questions is I ask my patients, do you foam roll? And they say, I have a foam roller. So I am here today to tell you how you can use your foam roller on your entire body. We're gonna start with your spine, then we're gonna work to your shoulders, and then we're gonna cover all of your legs from your hips down to your calves. Grab your foam roller, that's all the equipment you need, and just follow along. Starting with the spine, we're going to do the extension over the foam roller. I'm placing the foam roller on the bottom of my rib cage. Okay, so not my lower back, bottom of my rib cage. I'm gonna interlace my hands behind my head and then I'm going to arch back over top of that roller and then come up. Then I'm gonna roll down just an inch. So you see how I just lift up my bottom just a little bit, roll down over just an inch, and then I'm going to extend back and then come up. Then I'm gonna keep going up all the way until I get to the base of my neck. You're going to try to hit at least 10 spots moving in this dynamic fashion. So you see how I'm just arching back and then coming up. You have 12 vertebrae in your thoracic spine and you're gonna to try to hit at least like 10 of them. The point of the foam roller is that the foam roller is gonna to help to give a little bit of pressure into that spine. So then you arch over that and you're going to dynamically improve the flexibility in your spine. So so you wanna make sure that you're not missing any of those vertebrae, so you're just going to roll up just an inch. Moving on to the shoulders, we're going to foam roll to this back part of the shoulder, okay? So this is very frequently a sneaky area that gets often missed, so don't skip this one. I'm going to place my arm over top of the side of the foam roller, so now the foam roller will kind of be in where my where my armpit is. But then I'm going to lie on that foam roller, getting to that back part of the shoulder blade, and then I'm just gonna roll back and forth. So you notice how my elbow is on one side of the, of the roller and the rest of my body is on the other. And I'm going through this whole part of the muscle along this back part of the shoulder. This is gonna to help to improve some of that overhead range of motion. So you wanna to try to make sure that you roll through this area for 30 seconds up to a minute. It's not gonna feel great, but it's gonna be good for you. At the end of that 30 seconds, you'll place your elbow down and you're gonna work this external rotation range of motion. So I'm gonna bring this hand back. So it's my bicep is pointing up and now it's going to point back just like this. This is external rotation. I'm gonna get an active release for all of those muscles in the back of the shoulder. Moving on to the hips. So we're first gonna start with the glute area. So I'm gonna sit on the foam roller. If I'm rolling on this right glute, then I'm gonna sit more of my, um, more of my glute on that right side. And then I'm going to roll through this whole muscle. What I also like to do is cross that leg to get a little bit more of a stretch. It's gonna be just slightly different. And I'm gonna roll through this whole area. So you're gonna go down to where it feels like it's kind of bony. And then you're not gonna roll over the bone. You're just gonna go just to that point and then you're gonna roll up all the way up to this top part of your pelvis. So a lot of times people will be kind of too upright on the roller. You wanna make sure that you're still getting through this side part of the hip. You wanna make sure, this is the principle um, universal to foam rolling, you're going to avoid any of those bony areas um, throughout the leg or even, or even the shoulder. So I'm just gonna roll through here for 30 seconds to a minute. Now, for the quad, we're gonna do one quad at a time. Very frequently, people do both quads at the same time, but we wanna make sure that we are really isolating the entirety of the quad so they deserve individual attention. I'm gonna go on my stomach, so my foam roller is just on this right leg and my left leg is off to the side. And now I'm gonna roll through this whole part of my quad. The way I describe it is like you're painting a wall, okay? So you wanna try to get that entire length of the muscle. Do this for two minutes. So then that way you can spend the first minute on this upper part of the quad. So you see how I'm kind of coming, my foot's turned in, I'm kind of coming on that side part of my quad through the center and then along the side here. 
what you want to do then is after that minute, then you can go to the lower part of the quad. So now I'm just above the knee. That's going to make sure that I get the entirety of the quad. And now you wanna make sure you scan through this whole area. So this isn't intended to be this sort of thing where you only go on the painful parts. You're actually gonna help the painful parts by going on the non-painful parts. You wanna go through the whole length of the quad. So at the end of that two minutes, then you can hold wherever it feels kind of tight. You're just gonna do an active release of bending and straightening that knee. The quad is a perfect transition to the IT band. So now, now I'm lying on my left side, but I'm going to roll through this outside part of the quad and IT band. But notice though, with this IT band, first thing, avoid this bony area, okay? So when I come down here, I'm not rolling over the bone. I'm just going up to just where this bony area kind of, this is what's called the greater trochanter. You're just gonna go to that area. You're not gonna go above that. So this is a no-no. Don't go in here. Don't go on the bone. So you're just going to roll through this entirety of that quad and IT band and make sure too, this is one of my favorite things to do. I kind of place my quad down along that IT band and I kind of pull back. That gets underneath that IT band um, or really kind of underneath the quad where the IT band lies on top of the quad, I can really get to that so I can separate those fibers between the quad and the hamstring. That's a lot of times when someone thinks that they have like an IT band issue. It's actually that junction point of where your quads meet your hamstrings. So don't forget this. So after a minute, then you can hold wherever it feels tight and you're just gonna bend and straighten. Ooh, I definitely need that right there. That's good. So you're gonna do 10 repetitions. Now, the adductor. This is, or the groin, the inner thigh. The setup is really important. The foam roller is going to be parallel to my body, okay? Then I'm gonna bring my leg up, so now my leg is going to be perpendicular to the roller, okay? I'm gonna try to keep both sides of my pelvis pointing down as I roll through this leg. What happens most frequently is people are turned open like this, or they're actually turned toward the roller like this. You're not gonna get as much out of it. You really wanna make sure that it's like both sides of your pelvis are pointing down and you're rolling through it like this. So I'm trying to get that entire length of the groin. So I'm going all the way up and then all the way down to where the knee is. You can chunk this up just like how you did with the quad where you spend 30 seconds to a minute on the lower section and then 30 seconds to a minute on the upper section. At the end, then you can hold where it feels tight. You're gonna bend and straighten that knee. That always, especially down by the knee, a lot of times people really feel this. So make sure not to skip this one. Finally, we are going to foam roll the calf. So the same principle applies. I'm gonna do this lower section of the calf. So for about a minute or so, I even like to give myself a little bit more pressure. I, I press this left leg over my right as I roll through this. So I'm going through this inside part, the center, and then this outside. Then once it minutes up, then I'm gonna go to this lower, to this upper portion, just like this. And now at the very end, then you can hold, bend, and straighten. One quick tip. What happens is a lot of times people complain about how hard it is on their shoulders. That's why I say to chunk this up because if you're going through the entire length of that muscle, that's actually, you're gonna get a core workout too. I mean, you could do that, but you're not gonna wanna do it. So that's why if you see here, when I'm, when I'm doing this upper portion of my, of my calf, see how I'm just kind of just going back and forth? My butt's still on, the, um, it's still on the mat, so I'm just kind of rolling forward and back just like that. I didn't include the hamstring in this because frequently you can't actually get enough pressure through this part of your, of your hamstring to really get the benefit out of it. You'd actually be better served checking out our YouTube video where John and I um, did like an active release using a lacrosse ball um, for, the, uh, for the hamstring to target that a little bit more. If your hamstrings happen to be super sore, you might end up feeling that if you roll through that hamstring. 
but you'd actually just be better served if you're gonna spend the time to do something that's a little bit more effective. Give this a try and let me know what you think. I really like the ease of this because I'm just using one piece of equipment. I have this foam roller, so then I might as well just do a quick scan of my body. You're gonna be feeling more flexible in just such a short period of time, and it's simple. Just remember, you're gonna start with your spine, shoulders, and then work your way down your body. And also, if I can help to answer any questions, I'm always happy to.